Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new project. The Nordmende Rigoletto 59 is on the bench to be restored. I received this some time ago. It's been sitting there waiting for me. But this one came with some really, really unusual and not so pleasant surprises. It's got to do with the packing and I'm going to start by uh, addressing that issue. This radio was incredibly well packed. This was packed as a box within a box. The box inside had uh, foam around it, uh, bef you know, between it and the radio. The outer box and the inner box were separated by more cardboard and paper and foam. So this thing was incredibly well packed. And yet it's got a cover on. And the reason I put a cover on is because I want to do an unveiling for you so that you can get a bit of the shock that I got. Uh, you can guess where I'm going. The dial glass is completely shattered. It's not just cracked, it's kaput. Now, let me go on just a little bit further before I start showing you this radio about what I want to do with this particular project. I started restoring radios quite a few years ago. It's a hobby. It's something that I had to learn to do. My background is electronic engineering, but when I finished Varsity, tubes were gone. I mean, we were in the integrated circuit era already, 1986 or 85 when I finished Varsity. So, Going back and learning about tubes was a challenge and, and I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And I learned from some amazing people on the web. Most of my learning was from watching YouTube videos. And I seem to remember <laughs> one of the things that annoyed me was when some guy was doing a restoration and he'd just go over it and sort of glance over it and say, you know what I mean, or say, you've seen me do this before, or say, that's obvious. And believe me, it was not obvious. To me, it was definitely not obvious. A lot of the stuff I was seeing for the first time. So I had to go back and see a whole lot of other stuff to try and figure out why, you know, he was doing something a particular way or why things worked in a particular way. So long story short, I've decided to go back to the roots. I've decided to go back to doing a project the way that I've done a few parts of old projects, which is to go into a lot of detail both on the theory and the techniques for solving the issues or for taking that restoration forward. Now, I've done this before. I was invited to write a series of articles for a magazine, a German magazine called ELV Journal, and they uh, challenged me to do a restoration in a series of articles. Now, the articles came out every two months, so every new stage of the restoration was two months later. This radio, this was the Grunig 2147, this radio took me two years to restore because it took 11 articles, 22 months to restore. They wanted a lot of detail and I put in a hell of a lot of detail. Every article was about 10 pages with photos, with graphics that I had to do myself. And the irony was I don't speak German at all. I was asked to do the articles in English and they would kindly translate that and then they would publish the German version. So I now have you know, a lot of magazines from ELV, they would send me a copy. I've got 10 pages in just about all of them and I can't read it. I mean, <laughs> I trust that they did a hell of a good job because I've had a lot of comments, but I can't read the, the, the article that was actually published. But what I want to do is really transpose that idea to here. Do a series of uh, restoration videos like I normally do on a particular radio, but focus on a particular issue and go into it in depth so that if you are a beginner, this is the sort of thing that will probably teach you a bit more than, you know, seeing 20 videos and trying to glean bits of information from each one. I hope that works. Um, if you find this whole series is going far too slow, just let me know. I might, I can always speed it up. I'll probably also intersperse other projects or another project in the middle of this one. If this one is really taking too long and, and, and people are asking for too much detail, because believe me, I've had a lot of questions, mostly on email about things that I should have explained and instead just sort of glossed over. But anyway, enough talk. Let me know what you think about this idea of basically doing a restoration, practical guide to restoration in detail of German tube radios, okay? Because this is a German tube radio and most of the ones I've done are in fact German tube radios of various brands. So let's get in here and see this uh, catastrophe and can it be saved? The answer is obviously yes. Now, how easy or how difficult it's going to be? That is a question that still does not have an answer. If I've got your curiosity peaked, 
Enjoy the video. But before I carry on, I just want to thank the sponsors of the video, PCB Way. You can find them at PCBWay.com. And this is the company where I get all my PCBs for the uh, projects that I do and share on this uh, platform. You'll find a huge range of PCB types. There are also 3D printing services that I've used recently to get some uh, gears for one of the radios that I was restoring. Especially useful is the fact that you can get both uh, filament and resin prints. A very, very good quality. The prices were great as well. And one of the services that I haven't paid that much attention to, although I'm part of it, is the shared project section. And here you'll see projects that many, many uh, creators have uh, uploaded, including myself. And it's as easy as finding the project you want. Here's an example of the supply board for the DIY tube tester that I did. I've got quite a lot of projects on here. You just have to uh, follow the videos that I post. And I usually put links straight to the share page. If you want to get these boards, all you do is you add to cart and everything is there to make it easier for you to order. So whether you're looking for PCBs, for CNC machining, 3D printing, shared projects, whatever you want, go to PCBWay.com. You'll find something for your needs. All right, to start off with, this is a Nord Mende Rigoletto 59. It's from 5859, obviously. And this is a typical radio from that era. It's got uh, side speakers. I believe they're electrostatic tweeters. I'm not actually sure because I have not opened this up yet. The condition of the uh, cabinet is not too bad. It's going to need to be, since I've started doing this lately, I'm going to have to strip this down to the wood and redo it. You know, tiptonite it or tipped in it, as I've uh, got to calling it. And let's have a look at the catastrophe first. This is what happened. This thing came in the box in a box packing, looked very good. And when I took it out, this is what I found. This is heartbreaking. If you are a restorer and you see this, it's heartbreaking. I mean, this thing is well and truly knackered. Sometimes you get a dial glass with a crack on it. I've had that a few times before, but this one is gone. It's, this is exactly how it came in the box. I don't even know where some of the pieces are. So first thing I'm going to do is to remove these pieces as much as I can before actually taking this out of the cabinet because I'm going to have to reproduce this somehow and I'm not even sure how. I know that I'm going to do it and I've done it before with a, um, a Brown Atelier 3, if I remember correctly. The Brown Atelier 3 came with part of the dial glass cracked over there and I rebuilt it I had to redesign every little detail on the dial glass and I used, I think it was Adobe Illustrator at the time. And then I've got uh, somebody to print it out and it was stuck on acrylic and then there was another layer of acrylic. It came out incredibly well. In fact, it was very difficult to, to, to notice or to see that it was a reproduction. But the difference is this is um, dark. The other one was like a grayish. This is dark brown and it's got gold and I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. I seem to recall a friend of mine, Derek, mentioned he'd done this with, uh, what did he use again? I think it was decals. So I might have to go down that route. I'm going to try and save as many of these pieces as I can, because I'm going to have to copy what's on here. And I'm going to have to draw it. So we'll better start. Uh, two big pieces. Now, there are little shards everywhere. I'll have to remove those. Let me have a look. Ah, oh, jeez. In fact, this front reflector, what is this, diffuser, that's been broken as well. So this thing was well and truly pushed in. It looks like someone kicked it. And they did not kick it in the box because the box did not have any signs of damage on the outside. So it looks like this was done before they packed it. Now, I'm not even going to bother trying to contact these people for insurance or anything else, because it's just not worth it. I mean, <laughs> if anything, it provides me with an opportunity to show you or try to show you a, uh, well, a technique that I haven't shown before, which is reproducing a dial glass. I know some people actually reproduce these, especially for American radios, but I don't think I'll be able to find one of these. Of course, if you find one of these on the web, and uh, you buy it and they ship it to you, the chances of it arriving cracked are just as probably just worse than this, because this at least was protected within the casing. So first things first, I've removed those two shards 
And I had a look at the back and it is also a little bit sad. There is actually a piece of glass over here and another piece over here. Good Lord, what happened to this thing? The little shards everywhere. I can't do anything about that. I'm just going to, I'm actually going to vacuum them up so I don't get myself, I don't cut myself on this. Hopefully that's made it a bit safer. Now this has nothing to do with the broken glass, but look how they've held this in place. This thing's supposed to have a screw there and one on the other side. They've actually just pushed the screw into the wood. Oy vey. Try and remove it without doing any more damage. It's not an original screw by any means. That isn't a problem. You can always fill it up. And I usually paint the back with that artist's acrylic paint. It's matte, dries easily. I've spoken about that before as well. I am a little worried about getting glass, getting glass into my fingers here. So let's try and remove the back now. I've no idea what awaits us inside. This is a, oh, there's another piece of glass there. Bloody hell. Oh, that does not sound good. Okay. How the heck did someone manage this? Well, at least I've got the pieces of glass and I'm going to need them to reproduce it. So that's got to be kept safe. Here's another big piece. Okay. Whoa, look at that. There are shards of glass everywhere here. Bloody hell, I'm going to get a plastic container to keep these in. Glass project. I'm going to put them all in here so I don't do any more damage to them and I don't cut myself. This part, reproducing this, will obviously be somewhere near the end of the project but at least it'll be safe. This thing's full of little pieces here and I don't really want to lose them. I must admit this is the first time I've seen or received one of these. I've been very lucky. All the radios or most of the radios I buy I buy from Germany and they are sent by the same packaging technique these guys have used. And I've been very, very fortunate that I haven't had this before, but there's always a first time. Let's see, the plug is original. Whoa, there's an original plug, European. Lots of little pieces still in here. I really don't know what that is. Okay. Now you see what I mean about protecting everything. They did try. They really did try. Another piece of glass that fell to the ground. Usually the radios I receive don't have paper or foam or anything on the inside. This one, they've done it. So I think it was just damn bad luck. Ooh. This is a piece of the cabinet. This is not the dial glass. So, are there any more pieces over here? Probably are. So this is what we've got. Everything else looks pretty normal. This is how you normally see a radio that you open up. Everything looks pretty normal, except this one. Now you can see through it. This is what we've got, and this is what we've got to work with. 
luck of the draw. Okay, this is going to go get stored somewhere safe, and I'm going to see what I need to do to take that out of the cabinet. I want to remove the chassis from the cabinet. I need to see what is tying this to that. And if we look at it carefully, what we've got is we've got this yellow and black speaker wire. And then I've got this red and black, which goes to the electrostatic speakers. Now, this has got high voltage. The electrostatic speakers work almost at the B+, very high voltages. The uh, electrostatic speaker works by having a high voltage across a mica or a very thin insulating uh, uh, sheet or uh, separator. And then when the audio is superimposed on that B+, on that high voltage, it makes that sheet vibrate. And that's how you get the high frequency tones coming out of that uh, tweeter. That's what it is, a tweeter. Now, we do not want to make a mistake here. So what we'll do is I'm going to cut this. There's enough wire, there's enough length here for me to be able to then solder it down here to the output transformer over here. So I'm going to cut this and I'm going to leave a little bit of the wire color, the red, see that on there, and the black on the other one so that I know exactly which goes where. I don't want to reverse the polarities. That's taken care of that. Now this one is uh, the one that goes to the speaker, the normal speaker. And to release that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this wire connected to the output transformer and I'm going to cut it at the speaker itself. And again, I'm going to leave a little bit of yellow and what is that, black? on the speaker itself, so I know which color goes where. Sometimes polarity does not really make a difference, but I like to keep it the same as it was originally. Now, what do I do with this? Well, I'm going to use this, this output, as part of the testing that I'm going to do. So I'm going to have to connect a uh, test speaker to here. I could always just connect it back into there, but this cabinet's going to be put aside. So what I do normally is I take a uh, connector. Here's one I've used before. It's already got the, the black and red. Let's just strip these. And I'm going to put this in to the black and this into the red for positive. And now this is, these two wires are now insulated from, you know, inadvertently touching the chassis. And I can also connect my speaker to there. So that's done. Now, with a lot of these radios, as soon as you remove the speaker connector, you've got the uh, chassis completely isolated or, or separated from the cabinet. This one's got one more thing. It's got this umbilical cord over here because it's got those switches on the front panel. These switches are tone select switches, usually. And the best thing to do because, oh, wait, I think we've just got lucky. This is a bit of a lucky break. This thing actually, I believe, comes out of a plug, like a tube plug. Yep, there we go. And we can just lift it up and we can then just put it on later when we've done the restoration or when we're working on it. But it means we don't actually have to remove those switches from the, uh, from the front panel. So now we should be able to remove this entire chassis, including the dial glass, if it was there, all the way back, just straight out by, by loosening or removing four screws on the bottom here. There's two on the left, two on the right, from the underside. Let's see if that's all we have. Sometimes there's one or two more, but I think this one is standard. Yeah, it looks pretty normal. Two screws there, two screws there. We remove those and that thing slides up. Now, you do not remove them like that or the uh, chassis will just fall down. So what I'll normally do is just remove these two loosen those two, bring it up, and then take them out. Okay, those screws are out. This should be removable. And again, I don't need to remind you, you do it carefully. Sometimes things are stuck, like now. I've just realized what it is. There's a ground tag over there that I need to loosen. This ground tag is connected to that plate at the bottom to create a shield. 
So let's try again. Grab something solid like the sides of the output transformer. Do not grab anything that'll come loose. Let's try again. Here we go. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay. That's come out. All right. Let me put this on the ground and then we'll see what we're facing over there first. This part all looks pretty normal. There's the one electrostatic speaker. It's connected through the top, over the top to the other one. The speaker's in place. The switches stay in place. That wire that you see going around here, that little white wire, that is an antenna for the FM. And then it gets connected to your FM dipole input through this guy over here. That stays on as well. There are a few more shards of glass that I can see here, so we'll take those out and keep them. And then I'm going to put this thing aside because this will be, well, not the last, but amongst the last bits of restoration that I'm going to do. We've got a, um, what is that? A service sheet tag thing over there. So this has been worked on a few times, but I think it was, it was done by the original guys. And I've also noticed where that, you remember the little triangle that I said was from the cabinet? It's from this side of here. Okay. So nothing more we can glean from this. We'll put that aside and look at the chassis itself. Well, that looks pretty straightforward. Nothing too dramatic on there. I found a few more pieces of glass, which I've now removed. And before I do anything else, I want to make this safe to work on. And I've um, come up with a system that a lot of others have used. And it's a jig that uh, you screw the, that you put onto this and it allows you to rotate the radio and work on it on all sides. Let me show you how I do that. See, I've had these frames made. It's just a steel frame. A friend of mine soldered this up and what this does is it allows me to put this on the underside and screw the chassis, one on each side, to this section so that I'm able to then rotate this thing freely without uh, damaging the, uh, the chassis or any part of the radio. And the reason this works is because those two screws that I took at the bottom, the ones that tie them to the bottom of the, uh, of the cabinet, also will fit through some part of this section here. So let me put one on and show you what I mean. You see, I'm going to put this underneath here, like that. So it thinks it's on the, on the cabinet. Now I just have to find the right place to um, put those screws from the underside with a washer, with these original screws. It also helps me to make sure I don't lose them. I might have to put a spacer because it's going to hit that. But anyway, the point is you find a place on those uh, holes there where this thing will fit and you've got yourself a way of uh, connecting, of, of rotating the whole chassis. I'll show you when I've done it. It's a lot easier to show than to explain. Now with this one here, I had to find a different screw, the same thread, but shorter because as there's no cabinet now to uh, give it space, it was going to hit this transformer. So you've got to be careful with that. I've just found a smaller screw, shorter screw, and I can then tighten this on here. I don't have to tighten it too much just yet because I'll do the rest as I flip this over. And now I'm going to do the other side exactly the same way. Here I was able to use the original screw because there's a lot of space, but I'm not tightening that one because I don't know what's underneath. So I've put it in here just uh, lightly and I'll turn this over and see if I can actually tighten that or if I need to get a shorter screw. Not a problem. I've got more than enough space. I think there's a selenium rectifier over there, so I want to make sure I don't nick it or scratch it or bend it. In fact, it's going to happen. I, uh, I'm going to have to replace that, that part there, that selenium rectifier. So I don't want this to be that close. I'm going to get a smaller screw for this. And this is where becoming a bit of a hoarder pays off in this hobby. 
If you keep old screws, you never know when you might need them. Don't throw anything away. Tighten that nicely. Tighten that one nicely. I've made sure that I've got this at approximately the same height as the left one, so they are equally balanced. Tighten those. And this thing is now safe to flip around. And when I say flip around, I mean literally flip around. Look what you can do with this. You can get any part of the radio, work on it, flip it around, do whatever you like. Okay, this radio is now ready for us to start working on it. But first, let's have a closer look. Here we can really see the damage. Pretty, pretty nasty, but I'll get over it. All the buttons seem to be in good shape. This thing's got FM, long wave, medium wave. Can't even remember what else. I got so distracted by the damage that I didn't really worry about it too much. There's the FM front end. I'll be going into a lot of detail on these specific parts. We've got the IF transformers over there, the uh, filter capacitor over here, the uh, output tube and the discriminator detector there. Yeah, okay. And on the other side, there's the output transformer. That is the output tube. I think it's an EL84. Again, I'm not going to go, I haven't gone into the detail yet. Those two are the, uh, the uh, IF transformers. These are great because you actually adjust them from the back. You don't have to do the top and bottom, which is how you usually do it. IF amplifier over there. ECH81, which is the uh, mixer oscillator. The FM front end there, that's with the ECC85. We've got the ferrite rod antenna. Everything seems to be fine here. Nothing seems to be broken. This thing is a later model. It's on a one of the earlier versions of a uh, printed circuit board. I I don't mind them. I don't mind them. I think I prefer the point-to-point -point versions, but it's no big deal. These are easy to work on, so it's a plus. Now I'm going to look on the other side to see what we're facing. Well. Some of those paper capacitors, those definitely need to be changed. That's the selenium rectifier, which probably will need to be changed. We see most of the components or the tubes are on the PC board. There's our power section, our power transformer over there. The uh, switching sections. It doesn't look bad at all. It actually looks quite easy and there seems to be quite a lot of space, which you sometimes don't have on these radios. So that shouldn't be too difficult to work on. But the first thing I'm going to do, like as of now, is I've got to find documentation on this. I have not yet found or not yet looked for these schematics, service manuals, adjustment instructions, alignment instructions. And obviously that's something you need. I was a little bit overconfident that I would find them, and I usually do, but I haven't found it yet. So let me do that, and I'll show you exactly where and how I uh, go looking for them. The first place I normally go to looking for schematics and service manuals is nvhr.nl, and you click on schemas, which is schematics, and I know it's a Nordmende, and I know it's a Rigoletto, I know it's regular letter 59, but I'm just going to put Zuken, search. And here, there's my Rigolettos, 61, blah, 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 55, 56, 58, 59. There's 59. And if I go to Schema, it's got this, which is 59.3D. That's exactly what I see on the chassis. And... I carry on down, there's, actually this is a price list for spares. <laughs> there's my schematic. There is, this is a referenced component list. Carry on, the other side of the schematic, the third part of the schematic. 
Yep, there's our um, alignment instructions, our dial cords, the layout of the PCB. This has got everything. Okay, that's good. I'm going to download this and I'll show you what we do next. Right, I've got this now in my PDF reader. It's actually preview, but you can use this on PDF Adobe Reader. And I've got the schematic in three parts. This is the left part, this is the middle section, and this is the right side. Now, that's inconvenient to work with. This is also divided in two parts, if you can see that, actually in three parts. So you'd have to patch these together if you want to really have a working, a clear working document. I can do that, but I'm just going to search a little bit further and see if I can find one where the schematic is on one page. I've gone looking for the same thing on Electro Tanya, and I've found this document. This is for the Rigoletto Traviata 59, and it says here second page, and it shows me a preview of a full page. So I'm going to try and download it and see what we've got. Okay, it's downloading. Let's see exactly what it's given us. Okay, what I've done now is I've just opened it in my PDF editor program. This is in uh, preview on Mac. I've got the first page, which I really don't need, but I've got this now in the right layout and the schematic likewise. So it looks like I've got everything I need. I just want to see if this thing is editable. Let's see if I want to draw on it. Yep, it allows me to draw on it so I can then just edit or paint in as I go along. I think this is great. I think this one will work. There may be a few changes here because this is for a different chassis number, but because I've got the other one to refer to, and the other one, what they've got is they've basically got that as one sheet, that as one sheet, and that as one sheet. Much tougher to work on. You can always patch them in a drawing program, but I think this is a lot easier. I'm going to be using this one. I've now got all the service information that I need. Here are the uh, alignment instructions for the AM. This is the IF and RF alignment, and I'll go into more detail on that later. This will be the, um, the FM sections, RF and, and IF. You can see the IF uh, frequency for the AM is 460 kilohertz. For the FM, it's pretty normal, 10.7 megahertz. This is great. You've got all the information, the string uh, diagrams, the switching, and tells you where the various uh, alignment points are. You see the alignment instructions will refer to these components. We've got, again, components over here. These uh, drawings are great because they give you so much information. And we'll be looking at all this information in a lot more detail as we go along. But the beauty is that we now have a very good quality schematic here. And again, as I said, this might not be the exact schematic, but it'll be good enough. And that's where I'm going to leave you for now, because I want to start preparing the, uh, the next video with the detail that I mentioned I'm going to be uh, doing on this. I want you to feel free to make comments, make, uh, send questions, put them in the, in the comments below. Myself or anybody else who wants to can chip in and um, help inform people. The idea is to share as much information as we can on this and help people to become more familiar, more comfortable with tackling one of these projects. One thing I've got to warn you about, I've got to warn you about this. It's, it's, I know it's done all the time, but it's important. This thing uses very high voltages. It's dangerous. If you really don't know what you're doing, stick to watching videos. Do not get yourself zapped. It's not fun. It can kill you. So be warned. And I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you uh, stick around for the entire series. And if you have enjoyed it, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon and PayPal. The links are in the description below. I want to thank all those who become patrons and who make direct contributions to the channel. It does help a lot. But I also want to thank those who comment and participate in the discussions. This is a community. This is what it's all about. This is why I enjoy it. So keep doing that. So once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now. And most of all, stay safe.